What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Steve Nostantoski here, Amazing Brew, and I am fired the hell up. <laughs> Another Michigan basketball highlights video. Michigan wins 69-250 over Sparty to claim the outright Big Ten regular season championship. Let's go. In this game, the refs decided they don't like the game of basketball and wanted to make it the least enjoyable possible experience for everybody involved, players, fans. Uh, it doesn't matter because Michigan won, but it's a game that featured 21 fouls in the first half. That's one more foul than minutes in the half. That's not what you want to see. So that's not the best, but Michigan got the benefit on a fair number of calls, many perplexing ones against the Wolverines as well. So that sucked, but let's dive into this. Uh, there's lots to discuss in this game. So right away here, Mike Smith with the little turnaround fadeaway jumper. He got going early. Here you have Franz Wagner on the drive. Not able to get going early, but don't worry, he would turn it around. Here, Aaron Henry, little step through. Aaron Henry is like the non-Euro version of Franz Wagner. Great length, great strength there, great defense. I thought maybe, did he step out here? If not, a great play. I'm just curious. Ooh, oh. Okay, so he jumped from out of bounds right there. I, I honestly, this is the first time I'm noticing this. So right there. So that's a miss. That's a miss. Ref didn't catch that, but... Regardless, he's a great player, Aaron Henry. He's going to be an NBA player. There, Langford, not able to get that one. They called this a push on uh, Hall. Who is that? Malik Hall right here on Wagner. You can see right there. So, yeah, I think Franz Wagner sells fouls extremely well. I'm not going to deny that, but that one was a push in the back. Here, Dickinson with the screen there. He should have held on to that one, but uh, not able to get that. That's a pretty decent pass from uh, Smith. And then they call this again on Hall, his second foul here early. Um, like, yeah, he has the hand up in the neck area. I can see why you would call that. In general, when guys are fighting in the post like this, I don't like foul calls. That one you could argue either way. I don't like it. Um, here, Mike Smith able to step back. That's four points for him early. Dickinson pass to Eli Brooks. He says, hey, I want a three, and I'm going to get it. And good screen there. And watch that. Something to, to note here about how MSU defended this. You're going to have – oh, I need to change colors first, Barty. Here we go. Uh, they kept going under the screens, right? So you have the screen here for Dickinson, and they kept going under. And that leaves a lot of space for Brooks because they're going under the screens, not over them. It's a wide open look, and Michigan punished them for it. Eli Brooks, first example of that. Gabe Brown going for a three. That's off the backboard. That's not what you want to see. And a fun fact in this one, Michigan State had zero three-pointers. That is very fun if you're a Michigan fan, not so much if you're a Spartan fan. I call this moving screen on Dickinson right there. I mean, there's always like a little bit of leaning. I think because Dickinson lifted his foot there, I can understand that call. So uh, just got to be more careful on those screens there. Aaron Henry, nice little spin move. Mike Smith, that's a mismatch on that, so good basket there. And then they called this one again on a moving screen. This one I'm less a fan of just because I thought right here Davis looks pretty set to me. That's pretty standard. They call it against him. I don't understand it, but I'm not a ref, so who am I? There's a nice strip. Eli Brooks, Franz Wagner in there. That went off Henry. Henry, though, watch out. I usually don't include the other team's highlights, but he's an athletic boy, and he deserves that one. Gets the throwdown. There, nice little set here. So good patience on this where you have Eli Brooks off the pick and roll. And then you're going to notice he's going to do like a little curl right here. And what that does, you're going to have Davis with all this room right here. You have Marcus Bingham, a.k.a. Slenderman, down here. And with the body of Davis able to wall him off. And Brooks has an easy lane there. Here, turnover there from Henry. Pass up to Brooks. That's goaltending from Gabe Brown. Not allowed to do that, good sir. Here you have Langford. Nice little spin there. Able to get that one going. Here you have Livers on the other side. Can't get that one to go. Tough defense, so give credit to MSU there. Here a little pick and roll. Trying to go for the entry pass there. Davis decides it's time to go on a slip and slide. Not able to grab that one. Hogard. Tough game for him. Back up point guard there. Not able to get that one going. And then Dickinson. Oh, man, you're putting Kithier on Dickinson, which should go in the definition as, or in the uh, dictionary, as just setting up a guy for failure, all right? That's just not what you want to do. That looks like me out there trying to guard Dickinson. It's just not going to go well. 
So uh, not sure why that's the game plan there, though. Rocket Watts, he also struggled. Not a very efficient night for him, but able to get that one. Great pass there from Mike Smith to Dickinson on the pick and roll. Or was that Brooks? That was Brooks. Here, turnover for Sean New Brown. Great opportunity on the other side. Rocket Watts, tough finish there. This, these are always really tough for me to judge, right? Because it does seem that Shawnee Brown is like in position, kind of goes straight up. But again, it's all about like verticality there. There is body there, but how much is that Rocket Watts going into Shawnee Brown, whatever. So I think it's just a good play. I'm fine with the foul. There again, Kithier just helpless with the and one. This is another soft and one right here. I don't see, like right there on the arm. So technically it's a correct one, but doesn't affect Dickinson. He's fired up. He's got the furrowed eyebrows. He's yelling things. I'm a good basketball player yelling things. This is a moving screen, and that's just kind of lazy from Langford. You can see he passes right here, and then just kind of runs into Shawnee Brown. So uh, I think that's the appropriate call there. Um, here you have Hauser at the top, getting over for a long two. Good shot there from Langford. Hauser again, backdoor cut, and this is just one where Franz just got beat, right? So he's playing this a little too hard. You have Aaron Henry coming out to the wing here. There's no real – I mean, he's going for the steal. That's why it goes this hard, but that leaves the backdoor cut here. Good pass fake there from Hauser and good bounce pass there. And Aaron Henry is an electric boy. And uh, here's the entry pass down to Dickinson. He gets doubled here. I think he should have passed out of it. Instead, it's a strip for Joey Hauser. Hauser on the drive. This one I don't understand at all. He uh, decides to drive the lane. I don't see where, like, Shawnee Brown is doing anything wrong. He's just shuffling. Hauser just kind of falls right there and says, oh, I'm going to trip. And uh, they call the foul on Shawnee Brown. Again, I am biased, but I don't see how that's a foul. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, we're back. Episode 2 of Let's Cover the Screen with Useless Shit. And this is one third of the screen again by my. Oh, this is this is bad. This isn't. But anyway, one third here, one third here, and one third here. And they decide to fill it up with some Big Twelve BS. Anyway, on the actual court, Joey Hauser with the basket. Good drive for him. Here's a missed three point attempt. This is a bullshit call right there. How do you call that against Slenderman Marcus Bingham Jr. right here? Right? I mean, Livers is just going up for a layup. That's fine. Like, I get it. He gets hit there, but he's just in his spot for Bingham. Like, that's just coming down with the rebound. He's not reaching in or anything. So, that's a really, really bad call. Maybe one of the worst of the night. Good drive there and dish to Franz. Good job from Franz recognizing the lane, beating Joey Hauser to the punch there. Just great off ball movement and able to get to the point for the easy layup. So, good job from him, off ball movement. Here you have livers. Again, they call it a foul. Um, I know there's like a certain area where you're allowed to put your arm in the back here for a post up and kind of like load up with your off arm. I think this is too far away from the basket, and that's what the ref is saying. He's like, you can't do that out there. So that's why that's called. Again, I hate it. I say just let him play. Meanwhile, you have Brooks just going high glass. Look at this pretty move, right? Going all the way up here. You got over the athletic big men. Of MSU, and <laughs> my favorite thing, watch the bench right here. All right, this guy, he sees a cockroach on the floor, and his response is, I don't like these papers, I'm gonna kill it. And uh, they're a little frustrated over there, and they're down by six. Dickinson, good defense there, not able to get anything going for Michigan State and transition. Franz Wagner says, Give me those, and that's a three pointer. Michigan up nine all of a sudden here. Good little fade away for Rocket Watts, able to put that one down. Eli Brooks on the drive. Nice bounce pass there to Dickinson. He does get fouled there. I don't know. I think there's some body here, so I'm trying to be fair, but it looks like you can see right here, he's kind of like, I don't know. This is weird, like a little bit of a straddle there, right? So I think it's clean on the block, but not the body. That's my take, though. If you disagree with me, you think I'm a homer boy, then so be it. And then on the other side, you get the and one here for Dickinson. Um, this one seemed like you could call that on the floor right there, right? There's the reach for Dickinson. Totally is a foul. And then he goes up. They call it the for like the continuation and one. Again, I think Michigan's at, been at the wrong side of what's continuation or not recently. There, bad turnover for Johns. Livers here. Nice pass 
to Brooks in transition, and Johns makes up for that turnover with a nice little tip in. They got about three minutes left, down seven, and uh, they just decide to uh, set a screen here for Langford. And John says, I don't like this. I'm just going to run through you. I think that's an appropriate call. It's just really funny how late the call was, right? Like, this is all happening right now, right now. Oh, now it's a foul because you stepped over him. It's just a very odd call in general <laughs> at that point. But I do think, John's you can't just, like, run through a guy like that. Here they called a foul on Franz Wagner on a reach right there, which is probably the right call from a different angle we'll see. And then a little elbow to the face here. Now, Henry's being a nice guy, trying to help him up. I don't think this was intentional. You can see right here, I think a lot of guys do that with their off arm, you know, kind of wall off. I, I mentioned that uh, Dickinson does this quite often. So he called the, the foul. It is a fair foul on the reach in right before this, like right there. That is, there is a foul there. So it's on the floor. And then, yeah, I just don't think it's a, you know, Brad Davison style elbow there, especially with his reaction. They called it a flagrant. So uh, Wagner hit one of the two free throws there. You're up five. Here, good rebound off your own miss for Wagner. Puts that one in. You're up seven as the half is coming to a close here. There's a travel for Rocket Watts. And then you got Livers backing down. That's a mismatch against Langford. Able to put that one in mid-range. And uh, not a whole lot going, although that is a good move. That is a good move, but... Overall, John's showing this down the baseline. Hasn't been able to show that a whole lot this year, but he does have that athleticism to get away with that. Franz Wagner, his length bothering Langford. There's a foul on Hauser going the other way. Ten seconds left here. The drive for Hogard. That gets blocked. And that's it at half. You're up 11 for Michigan. I'm going to sneeze. Nope, I'm not. Okay, we're good. Uh, Dickinson backing down here. They decided double. And then, ooh, they called this a foul. This one's hard to see, Okay. Because we don't really have the angle here. That looks like it's it's probably on the arm, right? But we don't see it. We don't see it. So, again, they call that right away, 20 seconds into the second half. It's foul time again. This time, Dickinson. That's a good move over the right shoulder. Just rolls out. I'm okay with that one. Here, decent defense for Dickinson. Julius Marble able to put that one away. And then here, you got a mismatch there, Aaron Henry. Able to get the lucky roll in against Dickinson, but good job from them taking advantage of that. Here, loose ball. Dickinson able to survive that one. Franz with the three-pointer. Got the threes up on the bench. He's having himself a game. There, offensive foul. I think this is the right call. I think he had Mike Smith in position there with the forearm shove, so I do think that was a correct charge. A little step back. Beautiful play here with the dish to Dickinson. Something to notice here. So Mike Smith... Off the pick and roll, one great thing he does here, he takes an extra dribble, extra step back, and both the guys off of the pick and roll are like, oh, shit, he can shoot that. We're in trouble, and that opens up the pass over the top. Langford's the only guy who can come over late to defend this off of this pass right there. The ball is well-positioned high for Dickinson to get it. He goes back up strong with the dunk. Beautiful, beautiful. Hard to defend that, right? There's a miss. With the steal, though, Langford gets it back, but he also misses. Rough game for him. And then this one, <laughs> again, Franz Wagner, is he acting a little bit here? Yes. There's also an arm in there, right? Julius Marble does have his arm in there. If I'm a ref, just don't call that. Let it go. That kind of stuff happens all the time. I think that's a tough call, but Franz Wagner is able to get that one. Again, this is one where what are they doing, right? You got the pick from... Dickinson and Hall's going to try to go under it and get to the three point line. And uh, because they're going under it, they're just daring Michigan to shoot from three and they can't close out in time. And Mike Smith's like, yes, sir, I will take that here off a rebound. Who great hustle there from Eli Brooks. He's pumped up. You got the chest bump. Good job to pass to Dickinson. Good job from Dickinson with the awareness to stay there. And uh, yeah, they're pumped up. Nice little graphic on the screen. But no, Michigan's up 17 now. Here, just a little bit of mismatch there. Henry got matched up on Smith. Not going to win that battle. Franz Wagner trying to pass that one in. And this is called another foul on Davis. This is one of the more questionable ones. I don't understand how this is. Like, what is Davis doing here? 
Like you could maybe it has to be like this arm, right? Does he not like his arm or his leg here? I'm trying to create space here, but like really, you have Bingham with his arm kind of draped around here, and you'll see he kind of does like a little swim move to get out in front of him here. But they called on Davis. So I don't know what what anything is. You can see John Howard's pissed, and I understand that. But I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a ref. Clearly, I don't know. Good job from Franz. Uh, you'll notice it's a shot clock violation. You can see on the big board up here, again, this says one, but up here it's already zero. So that's all sprung because of the good defense right there to poke that away for Franz. That just creates a little bit more chaos, and that's a shot clock violation. So good job from Wagner with his active hands. Here, great find to Dickinson down low. He's able to put in that easy bucket. Slenderman himself able to get a basket over Dickinson. Get that dude a cheeseburger here. Franz really don't like that take. He didn't need to do that. It wasn't that late in the shot clock, but he's able to make up for it with that three. Again, what is Michigan State doing, right? Uh, time and time again, whenever a screen comes over, what are they doing? They're going under it. They're going under it. That's crazy. That's madness. You have a guy, the most athletic five that you can, and uh, they're just going under the screens and giving Franz Wagner a free look from three-point land. And that is madness. That is just crazy talk. There, good attempt with the feed from Brooks just over the head of Dickinson. That one, I think, is a good no-call. I think Shonda Brown tried to sell that a little bit. Clean shot. Not able to make that one here. Turnover for Marble there. Uh, Franz Wagner with the nice assist down low except Dickinson he's had a couple issues with these turnovers here where he's getting great position you know I think right here maybe you should just go up with it he tries to dribble once go back up seems like the body there uh bothered him a little bit from marble but uh usually he's been better uh than he was tonight in that regard here a little hook and hold okay you got Franz Wagner he's saying hook and hold hook and hold they go they do confirm it and the main thing I'm looking at here is who hooked who first, right? So you have Wagner over the top, right? Wagner clearly over the top in a box out. Here I see just a little hook right here, right? If I clear this, just a little hook right there from, who is that? I don't know who that is. Julius Marble, right? So I see it right there. Towards the end of the play, I think there is a little hook back from Wagner. Now you can see it like this. But I think it was pretty clear the initial hook came from Marble and uh, seems like the appropriate call because the first hook was there on Marble. Uh, whether Wagner jumped into Marble or not, you could argue that, but get a couple free throws there. This is a great example. This is going to be a long video. I apologize. But uh, this is a great example of just the gravity of Dickinson down low, right? He's backing down Slenderman down here, backing him down, getting some ground. And because of that, you put the fear of God in Gabe Brown about Dickinson and helping out on the entry pass that Livers is looking for. He backs up just another step, gets him off guard, and Livers splashes one from three. Bench is going crazy. you got the windmill towel up at the top of your screen here. Got the windmill right here from Eli Brooks. Great form on that. And then nice little shot there from Aaron Henry. Not able to get that one to go. Decent defense. Livers passes out to Smith. He drives the baseline. Nice little spot up mid-range. And Michigan's up 25. Dickinson down low. There, again, that's a good strip from uh, Bingham on that one. So give him credit on that. This, I thought, should have been a jump ball before this shot. Um, again, if you're a Michigan State fan, you probably think he has his arm right here. It looks like it's on the ball, at least on his hand. So... You know, that's another one where if you really want to argue that, it looked clean to me, but I am a biased man. So, And then here, again, they haven't adjusted. Michigan State again and again and again. I'm sure you're going to see Hoop Vision does great videos on different sets here. Um, but as soon as Joey Hauser's saying, okay, I'm going to go under this screen, Franz Wagner's like, I just hit a shot from here like two minutes ago. I'm going to do it again. They can't close out in time, and they just get throttled. Right? Got the bow and arrow for Jace Howard, appropriately so. He's licking his lips. He's got 19 points at this point already. And you're up, what, 28? This one, you probably could argue this should have been called a flagrant one. It is excessive. But uh, watch Langford coming around the screen, right? He's coming around the screen. Shawnee Brown's trying to follow. Off of this follow right here, right there, 
you do have the arm extension from Langford pushing off. Shawnee Brown says, oh, you want to push? Let's push. And they call it against Shawnee Brown. So I think the first one was missed. John Howard's like, no, I'm, I'm not, I don't have a problem with that. So like, that's the second time he did that. You go back out there and you play, so it doesn't punish him for the foul. And I agree with John Howard, you know. There, Hauser uh, puts a shoulder into Livers, misses the shot. Livers says, oh, I'm going to do a fadeaway over you, sir. And then you got Hauser again trying to do work there, able to put that one in over Mike Smith, just a little bit taller than Mike Smith. Here, Hauser again gets stripped by Eli Brooks. And now you have kind of like you have Baird in there right now. So you got Livers, Davis. And then this is the last minutes for Davis in, uh, in Chrysler. So right here is his fifth foul. And uh, the issue I have with this foul is – you have the arm getting pulled back for Davis here, so that's not getting called. The arm for Davis, you'll see, does go out, extend this way, but the player for Michigan State there kind of pulls himself into it. You can see the arm doesn't really raise the right arm for Davis there. It doesn't really raise. It's only brought into the neck of that player because of the movement of that player himself. So that seems like a really bogus fifth foul call. seems like they didn't like Davis down there today. But uh, what a career for Davis. Um, he fouls out of the game, but what a hug. Good moment there. Eli Brooks comes out, gets his own hug as well. And uh, Davis, man, him to stick around, provides such great depth at that position. And uh, now we're into garbage time. Up 27, you got a nice little alley-oop there. Joey Hauser putting on some moves down low. He's having a good time. Mike Smith comes out. He gets his round of hugs. And uh, everyone's pretty happy. Right, under two minutes here. Uh, oh, we're back with our bracketology. This is the same thing we saw earlier. Why are they bringing this up right now? Anyway, Falls gets called for the N1 against Sissoko. Uh, and then Livers. His time to come out. Kisses the logo. Gets the high five. What a career for him as well. Last game at Chrysler. What a player. Uh, MSU trying to make it look respectable with another basket. Jaron Faults here. Ooh. Able to put that one in. The bench goes crazy. I don't know what Dickinson is doing here. Watch Dickinson. Right? Dickinson right here. He's going to run away like he's trying to get out of the movie theater to go to the bathroom so you're not in anyone's field of view. He's just like, whoa, watch out. And he's just running away. <laughs> That's what he's doing. So the uh, whole bench is just going crazy. And uh, it's... It's a fun time, right? Livers hugging people, bench is laughing, and that's your that's your ball game. Big Ten champs, look at them go. Lovely, lovely to see. They're celebrating, they're pumped up, appropriately so, right? What a season, what a game, and uh, just getting started. All right, so let's move on to stats here. Wagner, nineteen points, six of twelve shooting, four of six from three, six rebounds, added a steal. Dickinson, fourteen points, six of eight shooting, ten rebounds. So that's a double-double. He did have six turnovers. I think a couple of those weren't necessarily his fault, but a little bit higher turnovers than you would like to see. Livers, nine points, three of seven shooting, seven rebounds, one assist, two steals. And uh, three other players had, or no, two other players, I think Brooks and Smith, excuse me, also had nine points in this one. So three key points, Big Ten champs, right? It's got to be number one because Michigan's number one. And, uh, you know, there's just lots of things to say. Livers could have left. We've seen it before. Players leaving early. He decided to come back. Really was a leader of this team. Juwan Howard, I believe, deserves Coach of the Year, not only the Big Ten in the country with the job that he's done. Um, the culture of this program is what brought them to where they are now, and that's, you know, obviously a big part of Juwan Howard and what he brings to University of Michigan. And the uh, whole team's just fun to watch, right? Very selfless, very focused consistent team outside of two games right that's it and uh, it's hard to do so props to the team overall number two all right Wagner back on track only two points against Illinois in the last one able to get going from beyond the arc really punished the defense of Michigan State going under those screens um, and, and it's just good to see you know Dickinson and Livers uh, a little bit of bounce back games for them as well not at the level of Franz but uh, yeah great to see there and then number three time to be petty Okay, what do I mean by this? Michigan State clearly on the bubble. They projected the first four in before this game tonight. Michigan could throw another beatdown on Spartans on Sunday. 
Uh, after the first round of the Big Ten tournament, if Michigan State won that game, uh, they could they would play Michigan in the quarterfinals, right? So this is a chance to go into the NCAA's for Michigan with three straight wins over Michigan State, and that would be pretty great. And uh, you know who knows that could possibly deny the Spartans a NCAA tournament berth, which that would just be icing on the cake. That'd be real fun. Let's do that. So <laughs> despite there not being like a whole lot on the line for Michigan, right? They're already pretty solidified as a one seed in my opinion already have the big 10 championship wrapped up but you can deny your your bitter rivals a chance to continue their ncaa tournament streak and that sounds pretty good to me so that's all i got for you 69 50 win big 10 champs Whew, great to see like and subscribe let's try to get this to 200 likes um and that's all I got for you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. We're close to like 3,500 subscribers after just hitting 3,000 like a week ago. So you guys have been great with subscribing. I appreciate you all. Stay safe out there. And as always, go blue.